Hello friends in our last video we discussed about the modification of tap root today we will study about the modification of adventitious roots on the basis of their function First of all what are adventitious roots as we know that tap roots arise from the radicle of an embryo but in contrast to this adventitious roots arise from any part of the plant other than the radicle Although plants with adventitious roots also develop primary root but uh, either either it is very short or short lived and uh, typically adventitious roots arise from the base of the stem or at the node of the horizontal stem like in first picture it is arising from the nodal region and in the second picture it is arising from the base of the main stem and in most of the cases main root and their branches are thin and thread like and because of this they are also called as the fibrous roots these roots are surface feeder uh, it means they do not penetrate the deeper layers of the soil and because of which they provide the weak anchorage to the plant but they also help in the absorption of water and minerals such type of roots are found in monocots means the plant with one seed leaf and examples are grasses maize and wheat etc like tap roots adventitious roots also get modified to perform the special functions so on the basis of these functions they are categorized into various categories first category is the storage adventitious roots in this category the cells of roots start accumulating food and uh, become large in shape and because of which they become fleshy and swollen different plants have different shapes of storage roots so on the basis of uh, these shapes they are categorized into following categories first category is the tuberous roots these roots do not have any definite shape and they occur singly example is the roots of sweet potato in sweet potato plant adventitious root primordia are present as white bumps at the nodal region of the stem when the cutting of the stem is transplanted into the soil the root primordia start growing under favorable conditions like proper moisture and temperature these roots convert into fleshy storage roots and these are called as the tuberous roots but if the condition is not favorable these roots remain thick but do not become fleshy and look like pencil therefore they are called as the pencil roots but sometimes adventitious roots get broken during the transplantation and such roots Uh, do not uh, convert into the tuberous roots and remain fibrous and uh, they perform the function of absorption of the water and minerals for the plant second type of roots are the fasciculated roots fasciculate means growing in bundles or anything present in bundle so when the tuberous roots occur in cluster or bundle they are called as the fasciculated roots example is uh, dahlia in dahlia they lie at uh, the base of the root whereas uh, in asparagus they occur at the regular interval throughout the root as shown in the picture another type of root is a palmate root these roots have finger like projections and therefore they look like palm of a human hand as shown in the picture such type of roots are found in orchis which is uh, an orchid plant and every year older palmate roots perish and new one arise at the base of a older one then we have nodulus roots in nodulus roots swelling occur at the tip of a root as shown in the picture these roots are found in arrow root which is a rich source of starch and mango ginger which belongs to ginger family and have a raw mango flavor that is why this is called as the mango ginger next category is the annulated roots these roots possess series of uh, ring like outgrowths or swellings it is found in the medicinal plant cephalis and this plant is uh, taken orally to cause vomiting in case of the suspected poisoning and another kind of uh, storage root is the moniliform these roots consist of series of bead like swellings alternating with the contractions which makes them look like beads of a necklace as shown in the picture and the monily form roots are found in the bitter gourd and india spinach 
Adventitious roots also provide mechanical support in some plants. So on the basis of this, adventitious roots are categorized into two categories. First one is the prop roots or pillar roots. You might have seen these roots in banyan tree. They arise from the heavy horizontal branches of the tree and support them like a pillar. When these roots become old and thick, it becomes very difficult to distinguish between the main stem and the prop roots. However, young roots with the root caps hang down from the branches and uh, are capable of absorbing moisture from the air. It means the young roots are hygroscopic in nature. And when they become fully moistened, they turn red in color. Another type of supporting roots are the stilt roots. These are thick absorbing roots and develop obliquely from the basal surface or uh, node of a plant. Such type of roots are found in the maize and pandanus plant. Stilt roots found in the maize plant grow in walls and provide support to the unbranched weak stem like uh, ropes of a pole. Whereas uh, in pandanus plant, they develop from the lower surface of the oblique heavy stem as shown in the picture. Stilt roots in the pandanus plant have the multiple uh, root caps so that uh, they do not get peeled off due to the friction with the soil when they grow old. Third category of the modified adventitious roots are the clinging roots. They are non-absorptive roots means they are not used for absorption of water but they are used by the climbers to climb up the support. They may arise from the node and the internode like uh, in trumpet flower and the money flower. They arise from the nodal region whereas in ivy they arise from the node and internode as well. These roots are thin and penetrate the cracks of the wall and uh, the other supports and hold it firmly by making a claw shaped structure which has sticky disc at the tip. Fourth type of modified adventitious roots are the epiphytic roots. As the name suggests, these roots are found in epiphytes. Epiphytes are the plants uh, that grow on the other plants. So epiphytes mainly have three types of roots. First type is the clinging roots. As stated earlier, these roots help in uh, fixing the plant to the substratum. And second type of the root is the absorbing root. These roots absorb the water and minerals from the soil particles deposited on the bark of the tree. And third uh, type of the roots found in the epiphytes are the hygroscopic roots. These roots are uh, thick, irregular in shape and hang down in the air from the plant as shown in the picture. These roots are covered with the whitish dead spongy tissue called as velamen and with the help of this velamen they absorb water from the air, rain and dew drops. And such type of roots are found uh, in the orchid plants. Examples are venda and dendrobium. Another type of modified adventitious roots are the assimilatory roots. These roots are green in color and uh, therefore they are capable of synthesizing their own food through the process of photosynthesis. First example of plant in which assimilatory roots are found is trapa. Trapa consists of floating leaves with swollen petioles as shown in picture. So these swollen petioles provide buoyancy to the plant and help the plant to float in water. Whereas uh, underwater section of the plant has assimilatory roots, these roots arise from the node of the plant and are highly branched which increase the surface area for photosynthesis. Second example of uh, such type of roots is uh, the teneophyllum. Plants belonging to this genus are uh, more or less leafless and with very short stem. An absence of leaves is compensated by the ribbon-like green roots as shown in the picture. And because of uh, these ribbon roots, these are also called as the ribbon root plants. These roots help the plant in synthesizing their own food. And there is one more example with such roots that is Tenospora, which is commonly known as Giloe plant. And this plant also develops thin assimilatory roots at its nodal region in rainy season. But these assimilatory roots shrivel during drought. Now the hostorial roots. These roots are found in the parasitic plants. That is why they are also called as the parasitic roots. The vascular tissue that is xylem and phloem of these roots make connection with the vascular tissue of host plant through a structure called as hostoria. 
we have already discussed the structure of hostoria in our previous video these hostoria sucks the water and minerals from the host plant therefore these are also called as the suckers for example in cuscuta which is a parasitic plant leaves and stem are non green due to this it is a heterotrophic plant and completely depends upon the host plant for its food and water supply and for this it makes a connection with the host plant through hostoria such type of roots are also found in viscum plant as shown in the picture this is a parasitic plant or we can also say the semi parasite these semi parasite means it absorb the water and minerals from the host plant through hostoria but they are capable of synthesizing their own food because they have green leaves some plants have contractile roots mostly in the plants with the underground stem called bulbs these bulbs have uh, wrinkled glucose storage roots these roots shrink when the glucose is consumed by the plant and they become turgid when the glucose is restored in them example of plants with the contractile roots are the crocus plant also called as the saffron lily and dandelion there are some other roots like uh, floating roots these roots are found in aquatic plant like josea or commonly known as the kisara plant in this plant some of the roots start storing air and become inflated they come out of water and help the plant in balancing and floating similarly there are leaf roots in salvinia plant in which one root at each node get modified into leaf like structure and that is why they are also called as the leaf roots these roots also help the plant in floating in water some plants have flashy roots with adventitious buds these buds can grow into a new plant and these roots are called as the reproductive roots because they help in the vegetative reproduction now what is vegetative reproduction vegetative reproduction means the development of a plant without involvement or fusion of gametes such type of roots are found in sweet potato and dahlia so that's all about the modification of adventitious roots and uh, we have already covered the modification of tap root in the last video you can uh, check out the description box for the last video thank you